In this short courseware video, we will demonstrate the use of splines and paths to animate your tools. Create a new composition, then open the preferences and set the composition's frame format preferences to NTSC D1. Set the composition's global start time to frame 1. This will automatically set the render start time to 1 as well. Change the render end to frame 80 and also change the global end to frame 80 to match. Your current time will still be 0, so set it to 1 to bring it into a valid range for your composition. Add a loader tool to your composition and browse to the for Courseware Footage Stills folder. Load the large Earth JPEG that you find in this place. This clip is a 2400 by 1200 pixel image of the Earth with a pixel aspect of 1 to 1. The pixel aspect is stored in the JPEG's header in this particular example, so even though our frame format preferences are set to NTSC D1, Fusion has loaded the pixel aspect at 1 to 1. Locate the green BG toolbar icon and click on it to add a background tool to the composite. Ignore the controls in the color tab and switch to the tools image tab. The tool should default to the frame format preferences, which is 720 by 486 with a pixel aspect of 0 0.9 to 1. If it does not, right click in the space between the controls and select the NTSC D1 format from the quick pick list that appears. Merge the earth map over the background tool by connecting the loaders at tools output to the background tools output. View the merge that is created and zoom out. When the merge tool combines images of different size, the foreground is always adjusted to match the background. In this case, the background is an NTSC D1 image, while the foreground is a 2K by 1K image with a square pixel aspect. The output of the merge tool is therefore NTSC 720 by 486 with 0 0.9 to 1 pixel aspect, matching the background of the merge. The larger earth map is centered over top of the smaller background. While the Merge tool is selected, the Display view shows a faint overlay of the portions of the foreground image that are outside the edges of the background image. These portions will not render for the final output, they are drawn to help visualize the non-visible portions of the foreground. If you select a different tool in the flow, you will prevent display of the overlay, allowing you to see the true output of the Merge tool. Reselect the Merge tool to see the overlay in place again. View the Merge tool in both display views, then set the right-hand display view to Fit. Adjust the size by dragging the green border at the edges of the image and reposition the center until the North American continent fills the majority of the view on the right-hand side. Our goal here is to animate the foreground center control with a path, causing the map to fly from North America, where the Ion head office is located, to Australia, where the first version of Fusion was created. To animate the center control, place your mouse pointer over the crosshair and right-click to display the View Context menu. Locate the Merge 1 Center option in the menu and then select the top option which is Animate. You could select Animate or the Path option immediately below it. Or you could also apply any of the expressions or modifiers that are found in the Modify With tab. Just select Animate to apply a default path to the control. When we attach the center to the path, we set the first keyframe for the position at the current time. Switch to the Timeline view by clicking on the Timeline tab or by hitting F7 on your keyboard. Here you can see the first keyframe on the Timeline spline. Locate the Merge's Size control in the Tool Controls. Right click on the control and select Animate from the menu that appears. This attaches the control to a Bezier spline and sets the first keyframe. Note that all the edit boxes for the values of the center and size controls have been highlighted with a pale white color. We can see the new spline in the timeline bar. Note that the edit boxes for the center and size controls and the merges tool controls have been underscored by adding a white background beneath the text label. This shaded background indicates that the controls are animated or controlled with an expression. Change the current frame to 80 by clicking in the time ruler or by clicking and dragging on the yellow separator bar in the timeline. Now adjust the center of the merge until Australia is centered in the display. Scale the merge until Australia fills the majority of the image displayed on the right. 
Note that these changes automatically set keyframes on the spline displayed in the Timeline Editor for these animated controls. Return to the Flow, select the Background tool, scale the left display view, and then hit the space bar to play our animation so far. Return to the Timeline tab once you've reviewed the animation. We should probably delay the animation slightly to allow the viewer time to absorb the map before the movement begins. Click drag one of the keyframes to set it to a new time, or box select both keyframes and drag to move them together. Set them at time 5. You can use the mouse or the keyboard to adjust the timing of the spline keyframes. Clicking on the name label for the spline on the, la in the tree on the left hand side of the spline editor will select the entire spline. You can use this to click and drag all of the keyframes in the spline simultaneously. Hold the control key down and click on other labels to add other splines to the selection so that you can move multiple splines in time at once. Drag both splines until they both start at frame 15. Click in an empty area of the spline editor to deselect both splines. Our change has caused the final keyframes in the spline to scroll off the screen. Use the middle mouse button and drag to rescale the view. Then box select and select all four of the keyframes on both splines. Locate the Time Stretcher button in, in the Timeline's toolbar. Click on it to display the Time Stretcher control. Then click and drag and pull the controls back until the last keyframes are located at frame 65. This control is used to scale all of the points and selected in the Time Stretcher simultaneously. Once the last keyframes are at frame 65, click on the Time Stretcher button again to remove the Time Stretcher box. The timeline is excellent for adjusting the timing of the keyframes, but for control over the value of the keyframes and the shape of the animation, you should use the spline editor. Use the F8 key on your keyboard or click on the spline tab in the work area. Both animation curves are currently selected, though they may not be visible, so locate and click on the fit button in the spline editor's toolbar. Currently, both splines use a linear interpolation between keyframes. To smooth the splines so that the animation accelerates and decelerates, box select all the points on both splines, and then hit the S key to smooth them. You can use the L key to make them linear again. You can also use the buttons in the toolbar to smooth, make linear, to step in, or to step out the keyframes. Select all the points and use the S key to make them smooth. You can adjust the smoothness of the beziers by using the bezier handles that emit from each keyframe. Click and drag to adjust the smoothness of this curve. You can also right click in the display window and select Ease In Out to display the taper dialog or use the T key. These controls adjust exactly how strong each bezier handle is without changing their position or angle. Close the taper dialog. To prevent editing of one of the splines while still displaying it in the view, click once on the checkbox next to its name. To remove the spline from the view entirely, click on the checkbox again. You can force the spline window to show only one spline at a time by clicking on the one button found in the toolbar above the tree in the flow. Select the size spline so that it is displayed in the view. Click in the center of the spline to add a new keyframe and then drag the position of the keyframe to adjust its value or its position in time. You can also set the value of the keyframe using the Time Edit box or the Value Edit box located in the top left corner of the toolbar. Use Control z or un Edit Undo to remove the spline point that you have created. If you no longer wish for a control to be animated, locate the tool's controls Place your mouse pointer over the control, right click, and select Remove, and then the name of the animation curve, in this case merge one size. This will remove the animation spline. Hit Control Z to undo removing the spline. Play the composition again to view the results of the changes so far. Our animation now starts off slowly, zooms to Australia, and then slows down as it reaches the continent. One final change to sweeten our animation is that Fusion is able to apply motion blur to any animated tool.
To enable motion blur, click on the Common Control tab for the tool with the animation, then select the Motion Blur checkbox at the bottom of the controls. Increase the number of samples to increase the quality, and then increase the shutter angle to increase the length. The effect of these changes are best viewed on a frame which actually has some animation applied. Change to frame 30 or 33 or in that area and view the effect of your motion blur. Click on the play button to review the changes with the motion blur applied. This concludes the courseware video on animation.